When we think about food, we don't usually think about the wastes associated with food and society. So let's talk about food waste. How many of us take too much on our plate, then just throw it out when we can't eat everything? Or perhaps you've heard of stores throwing away day-old bread or slightly bruised fruit and vegetables. What about the produce left over in the fields? All of that is food waste, which we can define as any food that was intended to feed humans, but didn't for any reason. So it's not just the food that you had to throw out from your fridge or leftovers from your plate, but also the food that was lost in the field or during processing or storage. So we need to think about the food production and consumption chain and all the losses along this chain. In the US, we waste 103 million tons of food a year. This is equivalent to 450,000 Statues of Liberty or 2.8 million dump trucks of food. If we lined up those dump trucks end to end, they would span the US coast to coast almost seven times. Globally, we waste 1.3 billion tons of food a year. This is 27 lines of dump trucks around the earth. This is obviously a big issue. Wasted food means wasted land resources. About 30% of all agricultural land, wasted energy, wasted water, and also contributes to environmental impacts, like 7% of greenhouse gas emissions that add up and contribute to global climate change. This is why the UN has one of its Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 12.3. By 2030, have the per capita global food waste at the retail and consumer levels and reduce food losses along production and supply chains, including post-harvest losses. So why don't we just solve the food waste problem? Well, it's really not that simple. It's a problem that's not only technical, but has social, economic, and behavioral aspects, a wicked problem that defies simple solutions. First, we need to be aware that food waste has different features and different impacts in rich countries and in low and medium income countries. The kinds of food and therefore wastes vary a lot, so there's a spatial component to this problem. In general, as countries become more developed, more meat is consumed, for example. In the US, food is packaged differently from, say, Southeast Asia. However, this depends on a lot of factors, culture, food practices, affluence. Second, we need to think about where in the chain we need to reduce waste. Of course, if we just put on our plate what we can consume and avoid leftovers, that would help. But really, we need to think about it as a system. We can quantify the food losses along the food system chain, from production to processing to various outlets like grocery stores, restaurants, industries, and households. So we should just determine where the biggest losses are and target those steps with the biggest losses, right? It's not that simple. Recent modeling and analysis of this problem shows that the biggest bang for the buck in terms of energy and environmental impacts is when you target food processing, food service, and households for waste reduction interventions. We need to target food processing because this is early in the process and we can affect large volumes of food. We need to target downstream of the process, food service and households, because there's already a lot of embedded energy and resources in the food as we go farther in the chain. A third issue is diet. Perhaps you've heard that reducing meat in your diet will reduce the environmental impacts. In general, that's true. However, some studies have shown that replacing meat with dairy and seafood such as in the uh, Mediterranean diet, that would actually require more land. That's because seafood, such as fish production, is expected to occur in aquaculture systems that would have a huge land footprint. However, switching to an all-plant diet would definitely decrease the land footprint and consequently environmental impacts such as negative effects on biodiversity. We can also think about converting food waste to energy as a way of reducing the inputs to landfills. One method is anaerobic digestion that uses microorganisms to convert the food waste. Carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables, proteins from meat, and lipids from fats, oils and grease, into methane gas that can be used for heating or generating electricity. This is the subject of research at NC State and has been shown to be a sustainable approach to managing food waste. 
Now, what about the waste that happens after you've eaten the food? That's the topic of the next video on, that's right, poop. <laughs>